Board gaming can be a little awkward at times, but that's less to do with the games themselves and more to do with how good or bad the players are at winning or losing. For the record, I am an okay-ish loser, but an insufferable winner and trust me, stomping your family's dreams into a fine mist can make Christmas night a little frosty. But sometimes there's not a force in heaven or earth that can stop a board game from being a fist in the mouth, bum clenching, eye contact avoiding nightmare. Sometimes that's on purpose and sometimes it's because somewhere along the production line people made a series of mistakes. Obviously, awkwardness is very subjective. This is probably going to be way more revealing about me than I'd like, but sod it, let's get personal. I'm Adam from No Rolls Bard, and these are the 10 most uncomfortable board games ever made. Number 10, Twister. Let's be clear, because of all the physical closeness of Twister, the game has sexual tension built into its damn bone marrow. Hell, the reason the game took off in the first place was because Johnny Carson played it with movie star Ava Gabor on national television. It got everyone all hot and or bothered. Problem is, you're not going to be playing it with Ava Gabor, mostly because she's dead, but also because you're far more likely to be playing it with your family. My family owns Twister, but I won't play it with them because I have strict rules on the proximity I have to my dad's ass. Sure, this game might be perfect if you're playing at the end of, say, a fourth date with someone you really like, but you don't live in that late night Swedish movie. No one does, except maybe Swedes, the perverts. Number nine, the Vanilla Ice Electronic Rap Game. I mean, gotta hand it to Vanilla Ice, that's a man who knows his brand. The Vanilla Ice Electronic Rap Game, a game I feel comfortable describing as made by and for Whitey, sees you gather together with friends and family to drop flibbity flames into a yellow plastic microphone that is not only shaped like a prostate massager, but also produces is a sick beat. The game comes with a board chock full of vanilla ice and on your go you put cards with words on the board. At any point if you make a full line of rhyming words, you have to take the microphone, launch that fat track and rap the entire line. King of the wig, his rap was portly pig like lyrical poet Fig, your mama said zaggy zig. Oh, Number eight, strip checkers. Now, to be fair, as a one-on-one -on -one game, you're very unlikely to choose to play strip checkers with anyone you're not halfway interested in seeing strip unless there's been some awful monkeys, poor, needful things situation. Stephen King, you rascal. And conceptually, strip checkers is easy to wrap your head around. You take someone's piece, they have to remove an item of clothing, but somehow the official game strip checkers manages to bollocks this up. First of all, the game is strictly man versus woman. Tell us how you really feel, strip checkers. Checkers. That's homophobic. And second, because on the underside of the checkers themselves are specific items of clothing you have to take off if that piece is taken, and most versions of this game ask you to place these randomly on the board, so you might lose your underwear on the first piece, and I don't know, just sitting sadly cock out at the start of a long game of checkers. It's a rough thought. Number seven, Nyctophobia, and now an actual proper hobby game, and not only that, one with a really lovely reason for being. Nyctophobia, which is a fear of the Night or Darkness is a game made by the designer for her blind uncle. In the game, all the players wear blacked out glasses designed to render them sightless, slowly feeling their way blind across a board of tactile pieces with their fingertips. Never sure when they're going to be attacked by the hunter, aka the games master, the only person who can see. The game revels in discomfort. Few games can actually pull off such a strong emotional connection, but also everyone's turn begins with the game master taking their hand and placing it on their piece and no, I don't like my hand to be touched. No, no. It's a super interesting and unique game. New experiences in board gaming are rare, but it's also a nightmare for people who don't like to be touched, claustrophobic people, or people with, you know, nyctophobia. Number six, Capital Punishment. Ah yes, back to the sh** games. Capital Punishment, how best to describe it? You know people who say things like, hanging's too good for them? This is them, the board game. Look, a silly board game listicle on a silly board game channel is not the platform for a debate on Capital Punishment and nor are the comments. I will say though that what this game asks you to do is gross. You're in charge of a bunch of criminals and you have to move them around the board, getting them onto death row, the electric chair, or life imprisonment before other other players can send pieces actually called liberals, pieces that start in a part of the board called the Ivory Tower, and these liberal pieces can free your criminals, putting them back on the street where they will proceed to kill more innocent people if you can't get them back into prison. Well, that's fucked 
fucking bleak. On we go. Number five, Fog of Love. And now another super interesting proper board game. Fog of Love is a relationship simulator board game you can play with friends, or maybe you can play with your own partner don't though. You see, the point of the game is to make a relationship that survives whilst also accomplishing a secret private goal. The gameplay sees you two as a couple facing a series of events and voting on what you'd like to do with these letter tokens. And sometimes your private goal motivates you to vote selfishly and piece by piece, the relationship suffers and the role play bickering might, it doesn't have to, but it might get real and oh no. Again, don't get me wrong, when this game sings, it's hilarious. And if you don't take it seriously, it's a really interesting, fun time. Competitive couples, though, check, please. Number four, True Colors. Find out what your friends really think of you. Do I have to? I already don't like me. I don't need a second opinion. Each round, True Colors asks its players a question, like, who is the most likely to have done a murder? And everyone secretly votes. Then players bet on whether they have the most votes, just some votes or no votes at all. And if they get that right, they get points. The game originally came out in the 80s and has been through a whole number of editions, some of which are just a whole bunch meaner than the others. Examples of questions in older editions are, who's wearing the sexiest underwear right now? Who's the biggest baby? And who's the least attractive? And hey, choose your playing group carefully and you can have an amazing time with True Colors. Choose poorly and it'll be a portal to your own personal hell. Only instead of a lake of fire, it's people calling you a bad cook. And I am not a bad cook. Cook. Number three, Barbarossa. Barbarossa is a deck building game where you're trying to build a deck of sexy anime Nazis. Here are some of the Nazis you get to be. Here's what the back of the cards looks like. Fiddle dee dee. Now, to be clear, apparently this game is functionally good. And hey, if you'd prefer to play a war game and rather than it being grim and depressing, you'd like to trivialize things with over the top sexuality, fill your boot. But also, scantily clad anime babes Nazi edition probably isn't the game to play down the pub. Unless it's that kind of pub. I don't want to go to those pubs. Number two, Dog Eat Dog. So this one's a bit serious. Don't worry, we'll end on something silly. This is a role-playing game all about colonialism with the explicit purpose of making its players as uncomfortable as possible. One player will be a fictional occupying force in a fictional land where all the other players are fictional natives. Every turn, a scene plays out between natives and at any point, the occupying force can waltz into the scene and make it all about them like a sweet 16. The occupying player can also punish natives if they're seen to break an ever expanding set of rules with a rule being added at the end of each scene with the first rule always having to be every single game. The natives are inferior to the occupying force. Oh, doctor. It's near the knuckle stuff where even if you try and play it light, the rules just keep hitting you and hitting you on purpose. It's the point of the game. Further proof that the game is trying to convey its message via this crushing social uncomfortability is the fact that the person who has to play as the occupying player is the person who has the most money in real life. And if you come from an uptight nation like I do, I would rather cartwheel into traffic than have that conversation. And number one, spin the bottle. Look at the front cover of this game. Absolutely no fucking thank you. Spin the bottle, fun for the whole family edition. What? Stop it, you two. Stop looking at what I presume is your daughter. Oh, I hate this so much. Like, from official pictures inside the box, at least some of the cards definitely do have kissing on them. Here's another card I found in the least favorite research I've ever done for a video ever. Make your partner blush using any means available except physical contact. Game, you know that's creepier, right? My skin is crawling. I hate, no, no, burn it burn it all down, burn the internet down. And that's our list. Sorry, what's the most awkward board gaming experience you've ever had? Let us know in the comments if you want to. And if this video made you laugh, give it a like, share it around, and subscribe to No Rolls Barred for more silly board game content. Get on board.